Welcome back, I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we're talking Finnish practicality and Japanese minimalism. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. As that just happens to be the tagline for the new A1 Automatic from the new Finnish micro brand, Ando Ando Ando. And yes, it's actually called Ando Ando Ando. And if I'm being completely honest, I don't really know what Finnish practicality or Japanese minimalism is either. But what I do know is that this watch is a prime example of one of the things that's really great about micro brands. And that's that micro brands offer you pure, unfiltered creativity direct from the brand's owner slash designer. Now, of course, that can lead to the occasional really vanilla looking watch. It just depends on who the designer is. But on occasion, it can also lead to something very creative and very interesting. That's exactly what we have here today. Now, before we jump into this one, one quick disclaimer, which was that this watch was provided to the channel and they're not asking for it back, hence the promotional tag at the beginning. However, one interesting twist with this one is that I've never actually talked to the brand or any of the three Andos associated with it. Rather, this watch was actually sent to me by Ivan over at Vario. Since Ivan's a more experienced microbrand owner, he just seems to be helping them out by helping to arrange some reviews. Now, that said, let's get to it. Size-wise, the A1 is on the smaller side of things, at least compared to a lot of modern watches. If you properly measure this one by going from the 12th to the 6th, you're only looking at 34.6 millimeters. However, with the asymmetrical case design, it doesn't exactly tell you the whole story. For that, you really have to look at the total width of 36.6, as well as the lug to lug of 42. Whichever measurement you look at, this still winds up being one that's perfect for those with slimmer wrists, or just for those that like smaller watches. In fact, their site says this is perfect for those with wrist sizes from 15 to 18 and a half centimeters, which is around 5.9 to 7.3 inches. The watch also looks a bit thick, and especially if you're looking at it from the side, but in reality, it's actually only 11.3 millimeters. 11.3 isn't exactly thin, but it's also not as chunky as it looks. The design itself just seems to be deceptive here, and that's thanks to its solid curvy sidewall. Other than that though, the A1 is pretty much what you expect. So rounding out the specs, you're looking at a 20 millimeter lug width, a fairly light weight of 68 grams, Seiko NH36A movement, flat sapphire crystal, and a nominal water resistance of 50 meters. Personally, I prefer more water resistance, but since this is sort of a casual, sporty looking watch, 50 is probably good enough. Now, with the unusual design, you might be concerned about how this one wears, but it's actually pretty comfortable. It's lightweight, sits squarely where it needs to, and once the strap is properly broken in, it just melts into your wrist. And this is one you can completely forget you're wearing throughout the day. But thanks to the asymmetrical design, I think it also wears a little larger than the specs would suggest. On my wrist, it feels more like a 37, maybe 37 and a half. And I think that's all thanks to that blocky right side. Anyway, let's move on and talk about the case itself, which Ando says is partially inspired by this. Newton's Cenotaph, and it's designed by a French architect I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. Although at the same time, I think lots of people are going to look at this and see similarities to the Seiko Ripley watch from Aliens. Needless to say, it's a very geometric design, and it's one I think you have to really just take in and decide for yourself if it's something you like. For me, I actually like this one a lot, but part of that is just from being a reviewer. As a reviewer, I see a lot of normal watches, and especially normal dive watches, so it's just fun when something like this comes around. Now, while the design is a bit complex, the overall construction of the case isn't. It's a two-piece design, with the main section of the watch in a simple bead-blasted stainless, while the screwed-in exhibition case back has a black PVD finish. And perhaps this is what they meant by the finished practicality of things. Although, while it's simple and fitting for what they're really trying to accomplish, I also feel that the finish here isn't quite up to par for the price. The bottom edge of the case is just a little too sharp for my taste, and eagle-eyed viewers may have also noticed an imperfection in the watch that I was sent, as there are two nicks in the finish right in that bezel area. There's a bigger one halfway between the first two indices, and another one a little bit past the second. With the macro shots, these imperfections seem rather obvious, but I gotta tell you, with the naked eye, just looking at it here, I really have to look for it in order to see it. 
so it's entirely annoying, but it's not too bad. Now, hopefully this is just a one-off issue with the one I was sent, but I still have to point it out because it might not be, and that's something you do have to be aware of. I should also point out that while this version has a steel case, out of the four colorways, two of them also have black PVD cases, and that might negate some of my issues with the finishing. Over at the right, we have another potential issue with the crown. From a design perspective, I think it looks perfect tucked into that little area. And because of the case design, as well as that crown being so small, this is one you never have to worry about hitting the back of your wrist. But from a practical standpoint, it is really small. With it recessed into that little area, it's pretty hard to wind, as well as pop out to set the time. With a quartz watch, this might not be much of an issue, but with an automatic, you're going to have to access that crown a lot. The crown is also signed with the brand's logo, one of only three branding marks on the entire watch. There's another one on the strap, and the last one is discreetly etched into the case back. Which, these days, is actually kind of refreshing. There are a lot of brands out there that go a little too far with their branding, just really trying to be in your face all the time. But here, it's subtle and just in the background, helping to ensure a clean and minimalist feel for the A1. In some ways, this is a bit of a risky move, as some watches I've seen with sterile dials just look generic. But I think the unusual asymmetrical design completely negates any of that. This thing looks anything but generic. Onto the dial, which for the most part is a series of circles with cutouts. And again, there are four different colorways with the A1, all of which are a bit different. Now, this particular colorway is known as the Black Donut. And at the very center, you have the first layer, a clean textured silver center that matches the brushed steel of the case, which is then surrounded by a black ring or donut, hence the name. And that ring is actually sitting on top of the first layer, creating a sandwich style effect. To that end, there are also cutouts for the hour indicators in that donut, showing off the first layer, which is then filled with luminous paint. Over at the right, we have a larger cutout for the day-date complication, which I assume fully works within the ideas of Finnish practicality and Japanese minimalism. But at the same time, it kind of breaks up the design. Although I do like how the black donut is also cut out to help partially frame it. And lastly, topping everything off, we have a set of simple steel stick hands. The hour hand can be a little harder to make out, as it only exists within that silver center section. But the different finish on the hand is enough to clearly make it out from the textured background. Luckily, this isn't an issue with the minute and second hand, as they're pretty easy to identify as they float over the black donut. Style-wise, it's a perfect match with the design but I'd still prefer it if the minute and second hand were a tad longer, as they do look a little short when you take the whole thing in. When you first see the A1, the overall design seems a little complex, a little strange, and maybe even a little alien. Yet as you dig into it, the geometric patterns start to emerge, and everything just seems to make sense. It's a little odd, yet at the same time, it's rather straightforward, clean, and effective. The different textures and layers make this a watch that's fun and fascinating to look at, while everything still comes through clearly, making it easy to read. I know I keep talking about the unusual design, but that's kind of the whole point of the watch, so it's hard not to keep talking about it. And because of that, on the wrist, it does look a tad odd. But it's not so odd that it would ever seem out of place. It's going to be something that's more of a conversation starter, as it is going to attract a lot of attention. Now, in terms of loom, it technically has it, with green C1 on both the hands and sandwich dial. But as you can see, it doesn't last long. The dial itself isn't bad, but the hands fade out rather quickly. In fact, they fade out even before those of a cheap Vostok Amphibia. So suffice to say, loom is not one of the A1 strengths, which is kind of a pity, and maybe that's something they can work on in future designs. And personally, I'd love to see a fully loomed version. As for the movement, Ando used a standard Seiko NH36A, the main workhorse of the affordable watch, so no real surprises here. This is a movement we've seen before, and will undoubtedly see again, and again. With regard to the strap, it seems like all four of the colorways come with the same black genuine leather strap, which as far as leather straps go, is okay. Honestly, there's nothing really to talk about here. There's nothing really wrong with it, and nothing really right with it. 
It's one of those you're going to keep on the watch until you get bored of it or it wears out. And personally, I kind of got bored of it rather quickly. Although one thing to point out about the strap is that if you do have a larger wrist, like say seven and a half inches and above, this probably isn't going to fit you. And lastly, with regard to value, this one is selling for 280 euros, which currently is about $300 US, which I'd say is fair. If you shop around, it's not going to be very hard to find similar watches with similar specs for less. So there's not a lot of bang for your buck here. And if that's really what you're looking for, I'd point you in a whole other direction. But the strength here is in the design. It's unique, and you're going to have a hard time finding anything that looks quite like it. And for some, that's the most important thing. And personally, I think that uniqueness factor is something that makes a watch last longer in a larger collection. I also think it's worth pointing out that this isn't a Kickstarter, so you shouldn't really expect early bird Kickstarter pricing. Production's already been paid for, and the watches are ready to go. And I'm sure Ando 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 is hoping to break even, if not make a little bit of profit. And we can't blame them for that. So in a nutshell, there are a few quirks here, as well as a few things I'd like to see changed. The build quality is okay, and the price is just okay. But the true strength or value in this piece lies in its unique asymmetrical design, which makes this a great option for those that are tired of the same old divers and who are looking for something different. And honestly, that's the whole reason I decided to do this review. It's fun to occasionally look at something that's taken the road less traveled. So if you're looking at this and enjoying the clean cut design, you might be ready to fully embrace the Finnish practicality and Japanese minimalism of the Ando 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 A1. Whatever that actually means. Now as usual, let me know down below what you think about this watch, or if you can think of any other interesting asymmetrical watches I should look at. I've always been fascinated by the Hamilton Ventura, and this watch might have convinced me to finally give it a shot. Plus, the Elvis and Men in Black connection doesn't hurt either. But as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, see you next time.